Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation, a non-homogeneous one. We have y prime minus y equals x times e to the power x. And we're going to be solving for y. We're going to use a very special method for this problem because, first of all, think about the homogeneous case. If we only had something like y prime minus y equals e to the x, then this would be easily solvable because we could first look at the homogeneous case, find a homogeneous solution, and then find a particular solution, which is probably in the form of, you know, something times e to the power x, and then plug it in to find the constant, so on and so forth. So we could try a couple different things, you know, or if we had a polynomial on the right hand side, such as, let's say we had something like x, y prime minus y equals x squared plus x, then we could try, first of all, again, the homogeneous solution is going to come first. But then to find a particular solution, we could guess something like a x squared plus bx plus c. Because by differentiating y once and then subtracting the y, we could easily get something quadratic, right, from here. So that would work easily, but that's not the case because we have a more complicated function, which is the product of x e to the x. And again, if you had something like tangent x or secant x on the right hand side, this method would not work as easy as the other kind. Okay, so anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're still going to look at the homogeneous case. We do need it, but then the next step will be slightly different. And the method we're going to use is called variation of parameters. Okay, this is a really easy problem that can be done with variation of parameters, possibly with other methods which we can probably talk about, but I wanted to start with something easy, man, and then maybe we're going to look at more complicated ones. And of course, variation of parameters involves using integrals, which is also going to bring us some interesting results. Great, because I did it without the constant and then did with the constant, and I'll share with you what I found. So let's start with the homogeneous case. We have y prime minus y equals zero. So to solve this problem, the homogeneous case, we're going to assume that y can be written as e to the power rx. Just a possible solution, right? So, and then we're going to differentiate. And the reason we assume something like that is because if you have a polynomial equation and the constants uh, with constant coefficients, you can pretty much assume this. If you had something like this, of course, that would be a different story. Again, I mean, this is easily solvable because it's separable, but imagine you had something different, right? Let's say we have an x squared plus 1 here and y, y prime here, and then again, that would be, okay, fine. I'm just going to add a 1 and then make it non-separable, right? So this wouldn't be easily solvable. This is different, but the co coefficients are here not, not constants, okay? But in this case, it is. So let's go ahead and differentiate y once. That's going to give us, remember, the derivative of e to the rx is the derivative of the inside from chain rule, which is the derivative of rx, which is r, multiplied by the original function. So it's going to be this. And then we just need to subtract and set it equal to e to the power x. And that's going to give us an equation, okay? Let's call the characteristic equation. You could directly find it if you already know what you're doing. I know a lot of people are just going to transition from this to the characteristic. But for those of you who are new to differential equations, uh, this would probably be a better step. So y prime minus y is going to be r e to the r x minus e to the r x. And based on our homogeneous equation, it should be equal to zero. In this case, we kind of factor out the e to the r x and that gives us r minus one equals zero. And this is what I mean by the equation because e to the r x can never be zero even if x is complex, right? It's never going to happen. I mean, x can approach negative infinity, but we're not talking about limits here. So set the r1 minus 1 equal to 0, okay? You could easily get this with the differential operator too. So from here, we get one solution, r equals 1, and we assumed that the solution was in this form, y equals e to the power rx. Since r is 1, we can go ahead and write the solution as y equals e to the power x. Of course, this is just one solution there are infinitely many solutions up to a constant multiply by a constant so we can basically write this in a more general form as y equals c sub 1 
times e to the power x. C sub 1 is just a constant and the reason we use subscripts is because we use a bunch of them and we don't want to just use C and then another constant. Could be a K, L, M, whatever, but it's usually better to use these. At the end you can change them if you want. Okay? So, we know that this is a solution and now, uh, but it's just the homogeneous solution. So if you want you can call this Y sub H, which is homogeneous solution. Okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. Looking at the homogeneous case, we're going to assume an equation of in this form, except we're going to replace the constant with a function of x. Does that make sense? So that's how the variation of parameters works, because c sub 1 is a parameter. We're going to change it. We're going to do a variation on it. In other words, we're going to assume a particular solution in the form of u times e to the x. Based upon this again, replace the constant with a function of x. So u is basically a function of x. Make sense? Not u, r, u is. Okay, great. So the next thing we're going to do is substitute this. But what are we going to substitute? We need to take the derivative. Let's go ahead and differentiate this. Instead of calling this yp prime, I guess we could do that, no big deal. We're going to use the product rule. Remember, u is not a constant, it's a function of x. So the derivative of u multiplied by the second function, the derivative of e to the x times the first function. This is y prime, and remember in our original equation, y prime minus 1 is equal to x e to the x. Here, we do need to plug it into the homogeneous, I'm sorry, correction, non-homogeneous case, because our goal is to find that special u function. That's why the thumbnail says, can you solve the problem. Hopefully you got that. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug it in. Y prime is U prime E to the X plus E to the X U minus Y, which is going to be U E to the X. And this is supposed to equal X E to the X. Notice that U E to the X cancels out. This happens a lot with variation of parameters and sometimes there are more complicated cases. But we got this nice equation. E to the X again is not zero. But let's just put, do the right thing and put everything on the same side. Factor out u, I mean e to the x, and you're going to get u prime from here, okay? e to the x again cannot be 0, so u prime minus x must be 0, which means u prime is x. Which means, by way of integration, u equals x squared divided by 2. Now, do we need to add a constant? Well, it depends, but yes, in this case, let's just add it. And I could probably just use x uh, c sub 2 because I already use c sub 1. This is my u, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. Now, what are, what are we going to do next, right? We're going to go ahead and plug it in and get the solution. Now, the general solution is basically going to be y homogeneous plus y particular. And y homogeneous, we already knew that c sub 1 e to the x. And the particular solution is, remember, it's not just u, it is... Where did we assume that? Particular solution is u e to the x. So we're going to multiply this by e to the x. Make sense? So this should be the whole thing and you can kind of like go home, right? We're done. Wait a minute. I do notice something. When you distribute, you're going to get something interesting. Let's do it. c sub 1 e to the x, x squared over 2 times e to the x, plus c sub 2 e to the x. Now, we can go ahead and put these two together and write it as c sub 1 plus c sub 2 times e to the x, and then I could probably just write it as x squared e to the x divided by 2, and then I don't need another constant, and if you add a constant, you'll get it wrong because it's not going to satisfy the original equation. So be careful about that, okay? Don't over constant it. Okay, now, is this good? Well, c sub 1 plus c sub 2 is just another constant, so why don't we call that c at the end? I can kind of use my more generic constant, and this is basically going to give us the general solution. So, if I did not add the c here, I would get the same answer, so I, if I forget about this totally, it will be the same thing, but do you think this would always work? Just let me know what you think, and... This brings us to the end of this video. By the way, I didn't do it, but you can do it. Go ahead and plug it in. Well, did we, did we do it? I think we did, yeah. Never mind. I forgot I did. But anyway, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you 
next time with another day. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.